Take your thoughts, Yao. Um, close game, Morocco holding the Spaniards all the way to penalties and then Bono doing the action. Yeah, it, it was a very uh, close game. Um, I, was, I was surprised it took the, the Spanish um, that long to even figure out that um, getting a shot from a little bit further away from, from goal would be their way to, to get um, over this hump. And you look at how long it took for them to be able to figure it out. I was disappointed in the fact that you kept on passing and passing and passing. You had multiple chances to shoot on goal. And they turned it down on multiple occasions. And the one time um, Pablo Sarabia was able to sneak in behind the Moroccan defense, he, he stood there for about 10 seconds, waving to his, his guys on the other side of the pitch just to get the attention that, look, I'm, I'm free, I'm free. Give me the ball, swing it quickly. For them to be able to even notice him, and give him the pass. That was disappointing that you know that you're going to move the ball slowly, but you are, you, are, you are quite slow in picking out your man and delivering the pass to him. And so for me, that, that was very disappointing. They kept overly relying on short passing, overly relying on slow build-up, and failing to, to, to shoot on goal whenever they had a chance to do so. And so it, it, was, it was an all-around disappointing um, kind of display from from Spain. And I love the fact that uh, Morocco stuck to their guns. They were very organized, very disciplined. Um, you had very few um, chances where um, Spain was able to breach their back line. Mm. And the, 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 the handful of occasions they were able to do, to do so. Um, Sofian Buffa, I think he was a little bit over elaborate on the ball. There were multiple occasions where a simple cross straightforward cross into the box would have, would have done the job and mm -hmm. would have created a big opportunity. But he kept on you know, doing the step over, uh, pulling the ball back. Those things were unnecessary. And they were quite inefficient in the, in the latter part of, the, of that uh, extra time where yeah. they had uh, a handful of uh, opportunities. I, I think they had two um, chances on the, on the counter-attack and they failed to do so. Um, Chedal, the, the substitute who came on in, in the game, uh, he was very disappointing in that end. And if they are to have a chance of being the first African country to move to the, the semi-final stage of the World Cup, they need to be able to bury these chances because they won't have too many of them going up against Portugal. Susu, let me come to you now. Let's talk about the Moroccan defence. We've spoken about it, but how impressive... Um, or how impressed were you, the fact that they were able to keep the Spaniards 120 minutes and Spain struggled to create that wow moment, that moment where you thought that it was a clear-cut opportunity. Morocco was so resolute. And I think we spoke about this yesterday, that when you look at the data after the Japan game, the Germany game, mm -hmm. they are not doing a lot with the ball. And Morocco would be even better defensively than the Japanese or the kind of... The, I'm sorry, the Japanese or the Germans because yeah. they have a more defensive game plan. We've seen it because we saw them against Canada, mm -hmm. similar style. We saw them against Croatia, similar style. So they played that way the whole tournament and it's working for them. The fact that the only goal they've considered is an own goal is not just chance. It's mm -hmm. by design because even when you get chances, there's usually a lot of bodies in front of the ball making it difficult. And if it gets past those bodies, you have one of the best keepers in the tournament. I think Bono is very underrated. Because if you've seen his trajectory at Sevilla, you know that this is one of the better keepers in La Liga. So he's not just an any keeper. He's a very quality keeper. So all these things meant that when Morocco sits back, they're not just sitting back. Because we mentioned that if you have a quality keeper and you're also sitting back, it mm -hmm. adds to your defensive resolu resoluteness. So when they were doing all of these things, I was not surprised. And Spain did exactly what we'd expect. You play the ball a lot. But if you go and look and you go into the numbers, and I'm sure we'll get into that, they created an XG of what? 0 0.9 the whole game. One to let's, let's, let's have a look at those numbers so we can just put the game into perspective. But you, you, you proceed with your point. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. You have the ball that much. You can only make an XG of 0 0.9. What's the point? Hmm. And you said it before that this kind of t passing and not creating anything, it won't help you. And that's exactly what happened. So let's, let's go through the numbers. You mentioned the XG 0 0.94 um, Spain, 0 0.6 for Morocco, 76% possession. Um, for the Spaniards. Remember we said it'd be about 80, we'd see yeah. about an 80-20 yeah. split. I'm looking at the final third entries, 127. And they got just one shot on target yeah. in 120 minutes. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. And, and that's exactly the point. We, we, and we spoke about it when we started the program, the whole tournament, about how bland they are. So getting to face this Morocco team, this was probably going to be the most difficult match for them to score because at least the Germans wanted to attack to a certain extent. Even the Japanese, to a certain extent, are a bit open in the sense that Japan, at least 
they are more they are not a team that likes to defend like that the moroccans the whole tournament you've seen them that they have come to play this way so mm -hmm. i knew that they'd be ready for the spaniards and the spaniards would not have an answer for mm -hmm. them and it was very disappointing on their part because you have all that ball. Look and look at the passes in the total pass in the final there. Look at that. Two hundred and sixty-seven mm. to sixty-seven. Well, well, according to ESPN, um, Spain completed um, nine hundred and eighty-eight passes out of one one thousand and sixty-eight attempts, and mm. Morocco completed two hundred and um, what thirty-eight out of three hundred and thirty-one passing attempts. In fact, the final match data was thousand and fifty. Yeah. It, it was Rodri, crazy. Rodri yeah. in fact, broke his own record. Yes. Because Rodri broke the record for most passes in the World Cup match against Japan with yeah. 204. He upped his record to 208, you know, last And night. in both games, he lost. So, the, <laughs> yeah, what's the passing, what is it for? The passing, yeah, to control the, the pace of the game. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you need that um, sequence of passing, sustained sequence of passes to to die down the momentum of the opposing team. If um, in other sports they will call a timeout just to break the momentum but in another when team. When you look at the numbers, you look at 13 shots on goal from in fact one shot on target from 127 final third entries. Yes. Doesn't just call into question the philosophy. Uh, I, I wouldn't question the philosophy. I would question the mode of application of the philosophy. Because you can't always um, pass your way um, to get that beautiful goal. Sometimes you need to pass your way, get to that final third, and have a shot. So I don't have any problem with the philosophy because the philosophy is good. You need to wear out your opponents, have them chase the ball around. You need to control the pace of the game. You need to control the momentum of the game, build up your confidence and all that. But it's when you progress the ball from the back, get to the middle bit, get to the final third, that's when you need to be a bit um, adaptable adapt to the situation in front of you. You can't always pass your way through, um, through a, a defense or a team, an opposing team. Sometimes you need to pass your way through. Sometimes you need to shoot. And they consistently fail to shoot whenever they got the chance to do so. Pedri had multiple opportunities to do so. Busquets, same. Gavi, same. They were always um, taking that that's extra not, touch. That's not the type of player they are. If I no. got those players in those positions, I don't expect them to shoot. That's what I'm saying, that you need to adapt. Because the situation in front of you is not giving you the I, chance I to always on, I would play your the, way through. I would say it's on the manager for not putting in a player who would shoot. Don't you think it's also down to instructions? That's why I, 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 yeah. I tend to agree with you. Because... If you find yourself in a position and you instruct the player to shoot in that position, I'm sure the player yes. will I don't at least think, seven I times I, out of ten. I don't think Luis Enrique has instructed them to shoot. And we know yeah, it. Yeah, so that's down to application. It's not it's, necessarily it's, down yeah, to yeah, the player. That's the players, players, the and that's why I'm saying that's even why he selected the players. Because if you want players who are to be shooting, you'd rather be looking for players who are capable shooters. From what we've seen of Pedri and Gavi and Busquets, that's not in their game to be mm -hmm. taking long yeah. shots. And it will be a wasted opportunity. So that's why I'm saying it's back to the manager. Because... Mm. They are saying, if, even Koke, Koke is a bit more, is a bit better at shooting than these guys from what we've seen. But he didn't want to use Koke that much in this tournament because clearly he preferred to keep the ball than to be taking long shots. And that's where the adaptation bit comes in because you have, as you started Asensio in the middle of that front three. Then later Alvaro Morata came in. Those guys were making diagonal runs. Those guys were making square runs just to get the, the Moroccan back line to shift, to move around a little bit, create that little bit of crease. And, and be able to attempt that shot. So it, the onus was on Gavi, Pedri, and the midfielders, Busquets and Co., to be able to adapt to that situation because mm -hmm. your guys are working hard off the ball, trying to get the, the Moroccan defense to, to stretch and open up and just a little bit. And those creases opened up. Those creases opened up, and consistently, they turned down the opportunity to shoot. And that, for me, was the disappointing bit. The philosophy, I'm okay with it, but you need to adapt to the situation. If you can pass your way through a back line, do so. Fair enough. All well and good. But if you, if you try it multiple times and it's, it's not, not working, working, you, need to, you need to move to a different option and attempt a shot at goal. And I, I, I saw a couple of tweets from, from other journalists who were, asking, uh, does, does Spain have a plan B? Do they have an option or a, a secondary option that they can attack teams with? And that uh, plan B or secondary option never came. Mm. You, in that situation, you need to adapt. And they failed to do so. And for me, for a group of accomplished players, that was very disappointing. Let's, let's now look I, at I have it. to say I disagree with you because I believe they started shooting. What's Luis Enrique's thing? You, start, you get off the bench and start shouting. 
I no, believe. I, I believe. I, if I you feel wanted you are them saying to, that the instruction should have changed, not necessarily the okay, players should have taken my, responsibility. Okay, that's that's my that's my that I would agree if it means the coach. If he's saying the player should have taken responsibility, you should. I, I think it comes both ways. The coach needed to deliver some instruction that look, what we are doing is not working. But as a player. You need to also take some responsibility. The same way you need to take responsibility so when you goof. So that you be subbed. <laughs> when you goof and, and it, it, gets, um, it ends up in a bad result, you need to take up on the responsibility or your, play, your role in what led to that bad result. For instance, if a game plan is to defend very deep and frustrate the opposing team, we get a counter-attack, we score a goal, then you consider a, a, a penalty, then you give away um, a pass and it leads to a goal then you end up losing the game. It can't be the, uh, the coach's fault. It, you have to take responsibility. And that's why I say, yes, um, Luis Enrique, we've seen him several occasions yell at his players, you know, stick to the philosophy. But at a certain point in time, that level of um, desperation, sometimes desperation is needed. It has a positive side. That level of desperation should inform you that you need to change your style have a shot at goal because I, the passing I think it will depend work. on the player, honestly. I, I honestly if, disagree if, with if that. Messi or Ronaldo is taking initiative, that is fine. But if you look at the profile of players being having that and, team, and for me, the manager and for is me, going to get on. I know we know how managers think. If you make a mistake in executing the instructions the manager has given That's you, history. you get a lot more grace than mm -hmm. if you decide to take things into your, your own, own hands and mess up. Let's let's now look at this, the score data. Yeah. Um, there was no goal, but let's look at the score data of um, the Spain and Morocco game just to assess what in terms of um, chances created and how these things uh, came up in the, in the game. So if we can look at that, so if we can just um, explain what we see so on the screen. To the us. dots are the short end. Okay, so well, this is like... So you can go, you can go to the screen. Okay, I'll go to the screen end, kind of. So you can see that the rises by Spain, mm -hmm. they are not very high. There's not much verticality. So it shows that the quality of chance was not really there. And you can even see that there's long periods where there's no shots from Spain. They're just keeping the ball. Similar for Morocco, but at least in Morocco's case, you can understand that they didn't have much of the ball. It wasn't to be expected. But the fact that even until about this point, where maybe Spain had a few, a flurry of last minute chances, mm -hmm. it was basically this very close in XG. Basically about a 1.0, a 0 0.1 difference. Mm -hmm. It just shows how little Spain created. And I would say that if you're a manager and you watch this, you can see with your, we are looking at your eye from a data standpoint, but from your eyes, your team is not creating high quality chances. And you're not changing anything, you're not changing the instructions. That's not on the players. The players are doing what they are asked. And that's where I disagree with you. Because these, and one of the things about modern players is modern players are less kind of, I'll make my own decision. I'll do, I'll be creative. I'll go outside their plan. They are more, I'll do exactly what the coach asks, how the coach asks it to the best of my ability. Really? Yeah. Oh, yes. Because I feel the, the, the millennial player is a little bit um, rebellious, if I can put it that way. So you are rebe rebellious now? Like I said, who's, you who's have to adapt. Who's the rebellious? Because me, the modern player for me is the Mason Mount, who mm -hmm. does the pressing. He does what the coach has said. Every coach likes him because he runs as hard as he wants. When they tell him that you don't do certain things, he does it. That's the type of player coaches I, I like. The, That's the why we have the uh, Obama. I, I don't think you condone rebellion. I, I, don't I think you're saying it because it's speed. No, I don't condone rebellion. Okay, let me, let me ask, let me, let me pin you to the wall. Okay. If it was Didi Ayu who took initiative and it went wrong, what would you say? If he took initiative mm -hmm. in, this, in this situation and it where we are passing and passing, and it knocking on the door, it, it's not working, and you decide to shoot, mm -hmm. I will condone it. Me, I, I feel like this is simple outcome bias. I, I, I will yeah. definitely it's support it. Honestly, I, I believe this is outcome bias. I will definitely support it because... At the end of the day, it's, it's all about the in-game in situation, the flow of the game. You try this several times. It's not working. You need to change it up a little yeah. bit. And it's not like you, every time you get the ball, you'll be shooting every time you get the ball touches your, your foot. No. You, you shoot when the, the crease opens up. Knowing very well that this Moroccan team was very, very organized. And like I, I, I honestly believe that the baller who is 22 years old, who is 21 years old, a 21 year old, that Gen Z kind of um, uh, players, I think they, they have a little bit of um, re rebelliousness in them than the throwback guys who are I more like clear according to my, <laughs> my instructions. No, because for instance, if you look at a guy like, you, if you look at the players, the, the wave of players that we had in the, in the early 90s, even in the up to the mid 2000s, they played to instructions. 
and they wouldn't even dare question the tactics of a coach. But I, now I, I, you have I, I completely I think, disagree. And now you have players who are who are constantly going at um, coaches and trying to disagree with them and explain their their end of the bit that oh, if you played me in this situation. I would have done better. If you played me in this position, I would have I, done better. I, 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 think the, I think the premise of the argument is what is happening on the pitch. On, uh, exactly. And yeah. Wade Batres is my point that on the pitch, the passing sequences weren't, weren't working. Passing your way through this Moroccan team wasn't I working. Don't think anyone so disagrees. You I don't think anyone disagrees with you. But we are saying that it has if, to you are the player, coach. if you are a player, you are not going to do it. And that's what the point I'm trying to make. Players play to instruction. And I feel that and the reason I'm saying that is that I feel that, and I disagree with you that modern players are more free-spirited and play to instruction. In fact, the reason why I would say that is that we're building around individuals in their past. Mm -hmm. So they would have certain individuals who could do what they wanted on their pitch, when they wanted, how they wanted, mm -hmm. and no coach would complain because that's the game plan. But if Sergio right Busquets shot the ball, I don't think uh, Luis Enrique will yell at him. I'm sure I mean, Luis Enrique will be shocked because Busquets on, is playing that position because he doesn't shoot. That's why he's there. Mm. And I, I, I'm saying Luis Enrique selected those players because they didn't shoot. The only player, if you look at it, when he selected the stars, the players who we see them shoot are Omo and Asensio. Yeah. And that's why I put Asensio in the strike position because he's one of the few players who shoots. Yeah. But he you was blanketed see, by the Moroccan. But you could see, and that's what I'm saying, from even the profiles of the players and what we've seen of the players and where he put them, mm. you could tell that he wanted as few shooters as possible. If he wanted a midfielder who would shoot, he would have played Asensio in central midfield or Omo, rather than Gavi and Pedri, because Gavi and Pedri yeah. don't shoot like and, that. And he would have also selected Iago Aspasi.